Hey, good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you all again. It's 22nd Street Landing. That's where I find myself for this morning's morning briefing. Got my cup of coffee down here. You're going to be joining me in one of these tomorrow morning, I hope, because tomorrow is our big celebration for our 1 million views here on the Friedman Adventure YouTube channel alone. And so we're looking forward to a great day. We've got a breakfast burrito for you. We've got your cup of coffee, water if you prefer. And we've got so many great guests that are going to be here Sunday, October the 23rd. i got to take a sip of this, okay? Mm. Ah, it's time for the morning briefing. And it is so great to be with you all because there's some really great fishing we're going to get into. There are some extraordinarily big bluefin tuna biting right now. The quality is incredible. And there's still plenty of Dorado around. I mean... It's incredible as we move toward our celebration, as we move toward Halloween deeper into the fall, fishing is still really, really good. And we'll point out where those opportunities are and where they are not in just a moment. But don't forget, 8 a.m. until 12 noon tomorrow, we'll be here at 22nd Street Landing. Come on down for a cup of coffee, a burrito, and talk to all the great folks who are going to be here, including Desiree Rodriguez. That story captivated the nation, the world for that matter. It showed up in the press all around the world. The nine-year-old little girl who was saved 36 years ago by Paul and Mark, of course, Paul Strasser and Mark Paisano, on board the first strength. She'll be here, and she is an incredible source of, inf of inspiration for me, as I know she will be for you. Eddie Leland, who's been battling cancer, is planning on showing up. Sam De La Torre from Island Fishing Tackle. Brian Wynn, fresh off a trip on the Cortez. And he's going to have a seminar along with our friend Roger Eckhart just for you on how to take on these big bluefin tuna. And if you miss the seminar, probably around 10 o'clock, don't worry about it because they'll give you a one-on-one -on -one seminar. You just walk over to their table and they are happy to answer any questions you have and interact with you because that's what this day is all about. More than anything, it's an opportunity for me to thank you. You come into the studio and take some photos with yours truly or just if you'd rather just take a photo without me, that's okay too. But just come on in so we can say thank you. We've got some great raffle prizes for you, 50-50 raffles, and deeply would appreciate it if you'd throw some uh, coins in there for the raffles. It helps us to produce more and more content, and we also have a donation bucket for our efforts in Mexico. Some of you are going to even bring some clothing down. We have got so much clothing headed to Mexico on January the 6th, and we'll be passing it out in several different venues down there to some people who really need your help, and you make that all possible through your donations, and it is costly to move all that clothing and buy more food and do all the things we try to do down there in Mexico to help our neighbors and say thank you for letting us fish such extraordinarily bountiful seas. It's a way to say thank you, and we can't do it without your help. So, again, it's going to be a big day. I can't wait, and I will see you here. We'll have that cup of coffee together. All right, one thing we need to talk about right now, and that is weather. And I'm not talking about a little bit of drizzle here today. We're never really concerned about that. When I'm talking about weather, I'm talking about seas and wind. And we're going to get it this afternoon, especially out there near that Tanner Bank bluefin tuna bite. It's going to get nasty out that way, and Sunday's not going to be very comfortable at all out there. It's hard to say whether anything can get accomplished or not. It will definitely make things a lot more difficult. We've seen this coming for a couple of days. I mentioned it to you yesterday. So I want you all to be aware of that. Locally, uh, we may have a little bit of wind also, but more so on an offshore kind of thing. And there's a pretty good swell with it also. So it could put the damper on what has been some extraordinary fishing. All right, let me start south of the border down there at Blackfin with Victor. And I got to tell you, Victor, he's got Blackfin sport fishing out of Puna Banda. A couple of great Pongas you can jump on, super pongas. You can go off and catch yellowfin and dorado. It's so intimate. It's just you and the captain. Ignacio Duarte is one of the great captains down there. He's always working hard and doing a really great job. And Victor, make sure that your fish is vacuum packed and sends you home with just a lot of great memories. Anyway, Victor is going to be here on Sunday. He's driving up from Ensenada, said he wouldn't miss it. Can't wait to meet him. I have not met him yet. But I just know that his information is spot on. And when there's something that's not biting and it's gone down the tubes a little bit, he tells me. So I admire and cherish that kind of a source. I am not 
looking for sources who tell me that fishing is wide open 24-7. I'm looking for sources who are honest with me, and Victor is one of those guys. He'll be here. So they had pretty good fishing. Still catching some Dorado down that way. There's a chance at the yellowfin tuna. That's still biting down in that neck of the woods. And you do have a pop of bluefin tuna from time to time. Those yellowfin range from 5 pounds to 60 pounds. And the Dorado are nice. You know, I mean, anywhere from 8 to 20 plus pounds on the flatheads down there. They're getting a lot of jig strikes on the yellowfin tuna. So trolling, you know, the old style feathers still work really, really well on that yellowfin tuna. That's a good way to get bit. And then, of course, you roll up on a kelp paddy and you want to throw a bait. Now, let me talk tackle with you all right now. And this goes for the San Diego fleet. It goes for the San Pedro fleet. It goes for fishing a pond in Ensenada. When you're fishing offshore right now, you need to vary your tackle because you don't know what the intensity of the bite is going to be. Is it going to be full speed, wide open, where they're biting the 40-pound? Or is it going to be really finicky, where just a few guys are getting bites and it's no accident who they are. They're fishing a lighter line, a smaller hook, and a good hot bait. That's the guys that are getting bit on a consistent basis. There's exceptions to that, I realize, but we're dealing with what is the average? What is going to get you more fish? So you definitely want to have a rod with 25 pounds. These are the two rods you must have. If you want to bring something lighter, by all means do it. And definitely something heavier in case you run into the big stuff. But number one, 25 pound with matching fluorocarbon. Of course, we love Opsin, USA.com, www.opsinusa.com. Put FA at checkout and you'll get a free gift and a love note from Greg Brown. So make sure you do that and that matching of the fluorocarbon is going to work really well. Then you need a 40 pound stick and you definitely want to match that floral with that. Hook sizes from number two to two oh. And you want circle hooks and J hooks. You want them both. And you're going to be in really, really good shape on this kind of kelp patty, smaller grade tuna type of fishing. So keep that in mind and that will get you in the game. That's exactly what you need. Again, another thing you got to pay attention to, some of these San Diego uh, day boats that leave in the morning, come back in the afternoon, some of those guys are hitting the Coronado Islands again. And your tackle is going to change there. You're going to want yo-yo iron, and you're going to want to have dropper loop type fishing. And I'll get into that when we talk about the islands. But I just wanted to give you that admonition right now. So your tackle is super important. Now, boats, I mean, they're spread out everywhere. But there's kind of a, a couple of good zones. Now, the Endeavor was just out on another great trip. And wouldn't you know, our buddy Joe Martinez, he has become such a huge member of the Friedman Adventures family with his wife, Grace, who watches us every single morning. I can't thank you enough. But Joe was just on the Endeavor. Tucker McCombs, we saw him anchored off our stern when we were fishing on the Legends trip on board the Freedom. And they meandered off and caught some nice fish at night, had some decent bluefin in the daytime. But Joe ended up with a 218-pound bluefin tuna. Just check that gorgeous fish out. Another slam dunk for Joe. Of course, Joe is the guy with... I think the biggest bluefin tuna so far this season again caught on the Endeavor. You tell me that Tucker McCombs is not on his game 24-7, not only with his work ethic, but his expertise. Joe had a 315, and now this beautiful 218-pounder. Gorgeous fish. And Joe says, man, when the captain says drop, in other words, you're on deck, and the captain says drop, Joe says you have got to drop now, not in 30 seconds. Not in 10 seconds, now. And if the captain says drop to 350, Joe drops to 400, winds up to that, kicks it in free spool down again. That's the way he does it. He fishes 130 pound, and he's got that same knife jig. He keeps fishing that same one. I believe it's like 400 grams, but I'll tell you what. You know what? Joe's going to be here on Sunday. So you can walk right up to him. You see him there, and you're going to be able to ask him exactly what it is. What's the secret to catching these big bluefin tuna? Because Joe does it on a regular basis. No question about it. All right. Some of the other guys that have been out recently, one of them is Marcos Garcia. And Marcos is going to be here with his daughters on Sunday. Marcos, I can't wait to see you. He was on board the Sea Watch where they had 35 Dorado on board for those guys. He limited out on the Dorado said it was really, really good fishing. It wasn't quite limits for the entire boat, but it was some really good fishing. And Marcos was fishing that lighter line and just slam 
Duncan and the Flatheads, really nice score there. Nine anglers on the mission bell. Scott Buecher checked in. He said, Phil, oh my God, we had a rough day. It was really tough fishing with three to rod and a few Bonita. Once again, this kind of inconsistency is something that's typical of the bite right now. Some guys get them. Some guys miss the, the mission bell today. Probably have a big day. And then somebody else will miss. So it's just... Sometimes the luck of the draw, sometimes you zig instead of zag, and that's what you get. San Diego, he zigged when he was supposed to zig yesterday. Nice hit for them with 13 anglers, three bluefin tuna, limits of flatheads on there. The Pacifica on a 1.5 day trip, those day and a half trips are still doing well. With 30 uh, anglers on board, they had 60 Dorado for limits. They missed on the elephant tuna, but there's still some really great opportunities on that YFT. A lot of it is that 5 to 12 pound fish, but you find the right school, you get the right sonar mark, you find a pod of dolphin that's holding, you find a kelp that's holding, you get a jig strike. Like, I mean, you see all those jigs go off in the stern like a quadruple jig strike. You know you're in the motherland, and then that's when it bites full speed. They missed on that yesterday, but that is still around. Most of it down there about 90 miles. But as you can see, I mean, the San Diego is not fishing down there 90. He's fishing up at 40, sometimes 50, 30, like that. So there's fish spread all around down to the south, and that is certainly really good news. And the Navigante out of Redondo, he was out and had limits on the bluefin tuna. And this other zone that they're fishing, some fish on Tanner Bank. I was just there on the Freedom, so we anchored on the bank. The vast majority of fish there seem to be that 12 to 25-pound class. But all of a sudden, you can get flashed with that fish that's 40 to 60, and there's some much bigger ones also. You see them blowing out. There's no doubt. A lot of 100-plus pound stuff blowing out on the bait around Tanner Bank, so there's still the chance to get that. We had to drop down to sometimes 20-pound to get a bite, but you know that game you're playing, you get a bite on one of those 100-pounders on 20, and for the most part, you can kiss it goodbye. Uh, some guys are good enough and talented enough and lucky enough to land one of those fish, but it takes forever, and you're playing a dangerous game. The longer you're on those things, the more chance they have to chew through the line and swim away to freedom. So keep that in mind. Thunderbird was up there at a really good score going and continue to hammer away at some good bluefin tuna fishing, sometimes at daytime fish. And then at night, of course, you got a chance on those really big ones with those knife jigs and the flat falls and the Daiwa SK jigs. I'm telling you, anywhere from 200 to 500 grams is what you're going to want to use in this weather that we've got heading in our direction. Probably going to be at 500 grams if it is fishable. Uh, hopefully this blow blows through pretty fast and doesn't disturb this bluefin or chase it away. I can't see that happening. I really cannot see that happening. I think we'll get through this and then go right back to a bite. may take a day or two, may not. may come roaring right back. But I don't think that BOT is going to go anywhere in this bite. So that nighttime bite can be extraordinary on some big fish. Uh, we've seen fish over the 300-pound mark. Joe's 218-pounder. We see a lot of fish over 100 pounds. And then at night, sometimes, guys just entirely miss. So I just want to drive that home. The inconsistencies here. I don't want you to get in your head that, hey, we're going to go out and catch a 300-pounder. You might. I hope you do. But it's very inconsistent right now. And with this weather here, uh, it's going to be even more inconsistent. Or it might be even consistently poor for a day or so. We'll keep our eyes on that, see what happens. All right, we bounce you down to the islands and there, Todos Santos Island, located right off Ensenada. There's quite a bit of yellowtail there. It was not biting that well, but it's every other day. It seems to chew pretty darn good down there. 12 to 18 pound yellowtail. A lot of it's yo-yo ironfish, so it's deep and that's no surprise here. In the fall, we see it do that and yo-yo iron has been working really, really well. Um, also, you see fish on the dropper loop, so you're fishing the bottom, you catch a lingcod or a yellowtail. You never know. In the Coronado Islands, man, I'll tell you, that place has been on fire all year long. But nobody's been there. I mean, everybody's been offshore. It's been such an extraordinary offshore year. And when I say nobody's been there, there's been boats there. And we've been talking to you about that great yellowtail bite at the Coronado Islands. But, I mean, the vast majority of guys are offshore trying to catch a big bluefin or a yellowfin or trying to catch some Dorado. And very few guys have been fishing the islands. One thing, when you fish the islands, you need a passport. So that complicates things a little bit. And it's much easier to just go offshore where you don't 
need a password. So again, if you're fishing in the Coronado Islands, you do need your password. Don't forget that. Grande yesterday, 29 guys, 46 yellowtail, 95 on the Bonita. As I just mentioned, a lot of yo-yo iron fish. And you don't want to fish that yo-yo with anything less than 40 pounds. So make sure you do that. And also a lot of fish on the dropper loop. Great way to take those yellows there. Moving up, let's just jump to Catalina Island, the freelance, real quick. Because they had a great day. I think two days ago they had 25 yellows. Yesterday, 40 yellows. The forks are biting. The squid is helping. There's live squid that has moved in up and down the coast. And the freelance just had this variety of bait that produced excellent fishing. They had mackerel, sardine, they had squid. I mean, all of it just seemed to combine for an extraordinarily good day. And here we are settling in maybe. Now, you know, we don't have enough days in a row for me to say, the yellowtail bite is wide open at Catalina and get out there. But it's been darn good for a few days now. And that live squid makes all the difference in the world. And most times you're able to fish heavier line. Definitely want to fish 25 pound with a 1.0 or 2.0 size hook on the yellows there at Cat. And hopefully we're going to see more and more of that. We'll be watching the pursuit today as he's out there. And those guys also getting a sample of that kind of fishing. It's pretty darn good right now. And hopefully it is going to continue. San Clemente, there's good yellowtail action there at times. A lot of guys are hitting that in the daytime and doing okay with bass and Bonita also mixed in with it. Santa Barbara Island's got a lot of yellowtail on, mostly private boat pressure right now. But those guys, the guys that I've talked to, have had extraordinarily good yellowtail action there. And up in the Channel Islands, a little bit of halibut and white sea bass copious amounts of rockfish that bite has been excellent up there in that neck of the woods all that squid though we've got market squid flooding into several different venues and that is going to produce some good white sea bass fishing at some point in time will it be tomorrow will it be a week from tomorrow will it be next spring that's the question that we have to try to answer and while we can guess at it it'll answer itself here in the future and we'll be watching that very very closely for you all all right um, along the coast, a little bit of bass and bonita, an occasional barracuda. I'm talking from Ensenada all the way up to the Channel Islands. A lot of sculpin and rockfish for most of the boats right now. No extraordinary fishing going on in terms of a surface bite. But, you know, a few bass here and there and not too bad. And really, really fun fishing. If you fish that light line, especially for bass, you can now do everybody fishing 12-pound floral. Man, you're going to get so many bites, it'll blow you away. Uh, you know, if you're new to this game or even if you've been in it a while, you need to remind yourself, I need to remind myself just how far ahead you are when you drop down to the lighter line and choose a good hot bait. Guys are like, what is he doing? What's going on? And it's easy. That's the answer right there. Of course, coming into that is you have to know how to pull on that light line and you have to know how to use it, but that comes with practice. So just jump in and try it and see what happens. If you're fishing bass, that is such a great way to get a bite. It works every single time. Uh, up there in Ventura, they get a flash of bass once around. Good rock fishing for Cody on the island spirit. That's been pretty good up and down the coast. A little bit of spot fin croaker, yellow fin croaker, occasional halibut for the surf fishing guys. It hadn't been great, but it hadn't been all that wide open. So, I mean, it hasn't been that bad. So there's a little bit of a bite going on there. All right, I'm telling you, there's some pretty good fishing going on. I mean, it's fall, everybody. 40 yellows on the freelance at Catalina Island is nothing to scoff at. And there's enough big fish around. Joe Martinez showing everybody once again. You'll see Joe here tomorrow morning. Make sure you say hi. He's a great guy and a huge member of the Freedman Adventures family. And, of course, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. If you've got kids and they got a Halloween costume, you know they want to dress up more than just that one day. Bring them down. There's some trick-or-treating that they can do. Uh, of course, here at Freedman Adventures, we're going to have trick-or-treat candy. The El Patron, Ricky Carbajal, flying in today from Salt Lake City to be your celebrity chef. And Ricky and Chris Isaac are here to talk about the El Patron to you. Talk Puerto Vallarta, big yellowfin tuna fishing. If you want to get on a list, you can do that so that when they are operational down there, you'll be the first to know. That should be good. But Ricky's going to have candy. We're going to have candy. Uh, 540 Slingers Club. My friend Jeff Yeomans is bringing a bunch of jig sticks for you to try out, for you to pull on. And if you want to talk about jig fishing to somebody who loves it more than anything, it's Jeff and all the guys that will be there with him. So 
grab a breakfast burrito, grab a cup of coffee, go see the 540 Slingers guy, trick or treat for the kids. We'll put the kids up on a pedestal and make sure they get a lot of applause with their costumes. It should be a great family day here. And of course, great seminar, Desiree Rodriguez. I don't know how it can get any better. We don't know how many people to expect, but we're hoping for a decent turnout and we're hoping that you're gonna be there because more than anything, with well over 1 million views now, and it just keeps churning away at thousands every single day, thousands of you watching the morning briefing and so much more. I can't thank you enough, and I'm going to be able to say thank you. Incidentally, we did a series of great podcasts out at Bass Pro Shops, Rancho Cucamonga, and they are up now. And it goes from freshwater fishing to saltwater fishing to um, fishing Diamond Valley Lake. We've got it all, and those are up now. Highly recommend you take a listen. I think you're going to enjoy those also. All right, everybody, I will see you right here with a cup of coffee on Sunday morning. I'm so looking forward to seeing you, getting a photo with you here in the studio, and just saying thank you for all you do. And if you can purchase some raffle tickets or help us with our Mexico efforts with some funds, it would be deeply, deeply appreciated. Have a wonderful Saturday. And Sunday morning, we're going to toast to the morning briefing together. Take care, my friends. Thanks again.